today on the marquee has got to be Max Blessed Holloway. Yet again with a beautiful unanimous decision over up and coming stud now probably a staple in the top uh, top 10 for sure might even be the top five for a little bit in arnold allen um mark what did you think of the performance and where does max holloway go from here what i thought is that max is still so damn good like it's almost like at this point he holds the max belt at, at featherweight like he's not the champ but he's almost like a secondary belt in and of himself, where it's like, can you beat Max Holloway at, at featherweight? Uh, and no one can, uh, other than Volk. He he gets another one. I thought he made a great statement in round one to come out the way that he did. He came out aggressive, connecting on some big shots. And I'm sure Arnold Allen knew that like Max was still here. I, I don't think he took Max lightly at all. But it was still good for Max to come out and, and set that pace right away and immediately make it crystal clear. Um, so that was good to see. Allen did bounce back in, in round two. Um, it was a close round. I remember live being torn on on who took that round. I think the judges were a little torn on it as well and ended up not not mattering in terms of the decision because Max did get three of them. Um, but Arnold fought well in, in, in round two. By the end of that round, Max kind of started taking it back, and then three and four is where he really took over the fight. Um, I could watch Max hit people all day. He, he's just... He's so damn comfortable in, in exchanges. Like, he will take one so that he can slip the next one and respond with four. Like, and they're from everywhere. It's it's a jab, then an uppercut, a body kick, an overhand, like a leg kick. It, it's everything. A body shot. It, he just, he mixes it up so well, and he countered so well all fight long here. Like, Allen would land one big one but then Max would slip and he would land three. And, and it was the difference in the fight, I thought. It was the reason that he won most of these rounds. Um, again, to Allen's credit, he went for it in round five. He came out hard. He was in there exchanging to the bell. He almost got dropped real late, but he probably took that round. Uh, all the judges, I believe, did give him that round. So good for him. And it shows you how good he is. And as you said, he probably is going to be around for a while. I'm sure he learned a lot in this fight. And he was close. It was competitive, but Max was just a small notch above, uh, as he still seems to be uh, on everyone except, obviously, Alexander Volkanovsky. And uh, no one else has been able to solve it as of yet. So Max Max continues the ride as as the uh, number one ranked featherweight. It's a beautiful thing that performance. Watching Max Holloway move. And his his distance management, knowing that he's not going to get hit, knowing that he's just out of range. Um, and he got cracked a few times. The real issue with Arnold Allen is the power. That power differential, I think, is a real big problem because Arnold Allen throws yep. 100% in everything that he, and he, that he throws with. Um, and to his detriment a lot of the time. That's usually why he's breaking his goddamn hands is because he's throwing with everything that he has. This might be the one fight he walked away with both hands intact because he barely I got I didn't hear off. anything. Yeah, maybe he, maybe he actually kept them okay. He barely got anything off. But the small things that he did land with, the few times he really landed on Max, even the, the, the breeze buys, you could see the damage on Max's face. Yep. Like, Arnold Allen is, is a problem, a real, real issue when it comes to that power. And I think he's going to be a real issue in the division, like I said, for, for a little bit now. Uh, it'll be nice to see some of these matchups. And yeah. segueing into the matchups, where do you think Mr. Holloway goes from here? I was actually just looking up Arnold Allen's age. I know he's young, but I was curious. He 29, is. okay. Oh, he's um, not that young. Yeah, not quite as young as I thought. I thought it was going to be like yeah. 27. Um, yeah, Holloway. You know, he's a tough one. He's fought almost all these guys, but he, I feel, kind of made it easy because he asked for the Korean zombie. Uh, they have not fought. Zombie said, let's do it. And I'm here for it. Like, as I was kind of just saying, Holloway is at that point where he's turned almost all these guys back. He's saying that's the one guy he never got to fight that he would love to fight. Zombie's probably going to take, what, one or two more fights here. Why not let that happen? Um, what I'd really love to see from Max is a committed move to lightweight. I just think there's so much fun up there that he could be having while in the prime of his career. Like, Max... Gaethje, Max Oliveira, Max Dariush, a Connor rematch, 
Chandler, physique, like I could go on and on. I would love for him to actually commit to a move like that so he can take these fights while him and all these dudes I just said are still in their primes. And we could see some of these, but I'm not sure that that's happening. I did hear him mention it again in the lead up to this fight that it's always on his mind. But, you know, fight ends. First thing he says is I'd love to fight Korean zombies. So it seems like we're not doing it yet. I want to be clear. I hate that fight. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it so much. Um, I want Korean Zombie to stop. And the moment I heard this, him call him out, I was like, no. No, thank you. And then Korean Zombie's like, yeah, why not? I'm like, fuck. What are you doing, bro? Um, I mean, he's still, he's still in the rankings here. I, I just can't really get on board with that. I'd rather see him fight the winner of Josh Emmett, Ila Tapuria. That would be more on my list of things I p- would prefer to see. I would really like to see Chan Sung Jung hang it up or maybe fight somebody who's kind of up and coming to make sure that like he can defend himself properly. <laughs> yeah. He's taken two real bad ass beatings at like the, the Brian Ortega one was I feel like pretty bad. And then the Volkanovsky one was one of the worst at a high level I've seen in a minute. Um, yes. Yes. So, yeah, I, I, I'm not really super jazzed about it, but uh, I get it. Winner. I get it. Winner of Josh Emmett, Ila Tapuria. Yeah, I think that's a good banger fight. All right. What about Arnold Allen? Where do we think we, uh, where are we going to stick him now? I will say it could be one of two returning fighters. They're at a, a little bit different levels, so it depends which where you'd want to go with Arnold Allen. But I think Brian Ortega coming back could make sense, and I also think Giga Chikadze, if he is ever ready to go, could be a cool one as well. I like the Brian Ortega one. I was actually going to go in the same direction I went in the other, my last pick, but in the other direction. The loser of Josh Emmett, Ila Tapuria, I think would be interesting for Arnold yep. Allen. That works as well. All right. Anything else you want to talk about, Max Holloway, or this fight before we move right along? No, it's a good pace. Let's keep it going. It is a good pace. It's <laughs> a lot right. happening. Congratulations to Max Holloway on being on our prestigious, exclusive. You're going to do this every week now, aren't you? Every fucking week. <laughs> Congratulations on the mark. All right. Next on the list here, we have Edson Barboza completely flatlining Billy Q in the first round here. I guess I'll go first. We had Mark go first. Uh, What a beast of a performance. And I can tell you right now, I don't care what anybody says, he's practiced that. That is something he has spent hours in the gym practicing. Whether he's doing it on a person, he's doing a shadow boxing, he's doing it on a bag. I I promise you that that is a move, a, a, a... a reaction that he has worked on over and over and over again. It was so perfect. <clears throat> the timing was so disgusting. Um, and Billy Q's entry was a little sloppy. And I think it, you know, it, it left him open to a lot of damage. Even if it wasn't a knee, it could have been an uppercut. It could have been a lot of different things. Um, but his hands were wide out of place. His body was down, telegraphed the takedown completely. And, Ate a knee straight to the jaw. Um, beautiful performance from from Edson. Had me a little worried in the beginning because I didn't. I hate when he starts moving backwards all the time and he's almost seems like he's giving up the space um, and, and ends up against the cage and like that. Edson concerns me, um, but it seems like at some point he was looking for that motion. He was looking for that move, um, and I think he he had a lot of confidence that if he landed it, he would go. So. Good on him, man. It's a great performance. So I don't know if you heard him post-fight, but he said that they had been drilling that specific instance all camp. He said it was something they saw in Quarantillo. Yeah, dude. You could tell from the way he threw it, from his reaction to it, you can tell that that was something that was second nature to him. He had probably spent hours and hours and hours drilling that. Yep. Yeah, he said they saw it. Um, But yeah, that... Went largely how I thought it would. Um, I, th- I think I said round two, so I, I, it, w- it was quicker than I thought. But as much as Edson is maybe on the, the latter part of his career here, if you're not a top-shelf wrestler who can take Edson down on command, 
then you have to be a really high-level striker. Like, guys who are just going to try to outscrap him on the feet are generally going to end up getting hurt, and, and that's how I saw this one. He's too good. He's too fast. He's seen it all, and if you let him play and analyze, he's going to find a spot, and, and he's going to hurt you badly, and that's exactly what he did to Billy Q. Time to the big knee. That was all she wrote, and Billy will be back. You know, that was his first big chance, really. And he's a good fighter, but Edson gets a win that he really needed to stay relevant here as, you know, how I said, as his career kind of moves toward the back end. But he he sets himself up now for another another probably top 10 ish, at least ranked level fight. Yeah. And you had to wonder how the pressure from Billy Q was going to play a factor in the fight, especially knowing that that's part of it's a big <clears throat> part of Billy Q's game. Um, but I think the sloppiness and the takedowns, I think in the end, even with the pressure, ended up costing him. So. Yeah. Good on uh, Mr. Barboza for getting a beautiful win. Did he end up getting a knockout bonus? Do you know? I don't know. Bonus? I feel like he should have got, but I don't know. Right? I, I give that man his fucking his 50 Gs, bro. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Where does Edson Barboza go from here? So I don't think Edson really moves <laughs> much, right? I mean, this wasn't nah. really one of those ones that moves him anywhere. Um, probably a gatekeeping fight if, yep. if you've ever seen one. Yep. Um, so I don't really know what you do with him. I guess there is a fight now scheduled for Bryce Mitchell. Um, that well, is coming he, up. Remember, he just lost to Bryce Mitchell. Well, I figured he could do the loser of that fight. Even if it's Bryce who just beat him. When did he beat him? Last fight. No, he, two, he lost or... to Elia No, no, no. I'm saying Edson's last fight. Unless there's one in between there that I'm forgetting. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, you're right. Just this one and the Bryce Mitchell one. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah that was Bryce's breakthrough. Yeah, like, I, I'm so concerned about giving Edson another random kid to just figure out if he's good enough or not. You know what I mean? I'll throw something out. I feel like a dude who's kind of right in the same place as Edson right now, granted he is more of an up-and-coming type, is Sadiq Yusuf. I could see that being the logical one. But the one I'm saying I'll throw out is if they listen to you and Max versus the zombie does not happen, I actually think Edson and Chan Sung Jung is a cool fight of of kind of two veteran violence dudes. Bro. Why are you trying to kill this fucking poor guy? He's going to take a fight. Would you just not want him to fight anybody? Nobody, not a single human being, do I want a chance. We're past that dude. With. He's not retiring. He's fighting at wow. least one more. He's got to fight somebody. How cool would would the zombie and Edson be, man? That'd be great. It that, it has me concerned. It all has me concerned. You go off cliff so fast on guys. Like as soon I, as you decide they shouldn't fight anymore, you're all the way out <laughs> dude because i just keep having images of them getting smoked left and right like i could just see edson just rocking zombie with body shot after body shot of kicks and it's I just like do. why why do i want to see this this poor man just getting railed against this oh no no i could too <sighs> all right did we land on anything did we give barboza something to do here uh, i guess the sadiq yusuf is the logical one yeah i hate it I hate that too. I wish we had a better option for him. Honestly, I really do. Uh, like well, what are you look, What are you looking for? What do you want him to be doing? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. That's a good point. I don't know. I just I feel mean, like he's beating these like up and coming guys and not really getting any kind of nothing for it. Nothing. Nothing. Man. Yeah. And I if he mean... beats Sadiq Yusuf, then then what? Another nothing. And then we've spent a year. Doing That's not a goddamn one, thing. Though. Yusuf's ranked, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's ranked above Edson. Is he ranked above Edson? Yeah, Edson's 14, Yusuf is 12. Yeah, all right, take that then, I guess. That makes that <laughs> definitely makes more sense. There you go. I Come didn't on. realize he was 12. All right. All right. Uh, what about Billy Q? Billy Q, I don't, again, doesn't really move too much. This was a, a fight against somebody who was more, a higher rank than he was. So what, what are we doing with Billy Q? I will say Lerone Murphy. He is still undefeated, keeps winning. He's been a bit inactive, so his his rise has kind of been stalled, and I think he deserves a chance to try to level up, and I could see Billy Q fitting that bill. I want to know what this song boy is doing. 
So I don't know what the hell happened to Alex Caceres because we know that he dropped out recently in his last fight that he was scheduled. Right. But if he's good now, yep. I'll do Alex and, and Billy Q. I think that's, I that's a banger of a fight. And I think one that both of them can keep a high pace the entire time. Agree. That's a good fight. All right. Uh, moving right along. Pedro Munoz with the y'all must have forgot unanimous decision. There was a twang there. Unanimous, <laughs> unanimous decision over quit Chris Gutierrez. Words are going to be difficult for your boy today. Uh, what a great, great fight from Pedro Munoz. Mark, give us the lowdown. Tell us what you think Pedro Munoz should do from here. You are right. It was a y'all must have forgot. I uh, I tried to emphasize last week how... I felt like Munoz was being underrated because of some tough matchups and weird outcomes like the O'Malley one. And I still didn't pick him. I still went Gutierrez. So even I forgot in in a way. Um, And he showed it. I really think that that bomb that he landed in round one changed the whole fight because I think Gutierrez fought more tentative for a while than he would have otherwise because he just, he didn't want to get clipped again. And it kind of seemed like until like past the middle of round two, before he kind of looked like himself again. Um, you know, he, he was throwing one shot at a time. He was just being really careful about entering with combos or anything like that, that, that would keep him in range for too long. So I, I think he just lost too much of the fight there um, after that. But to Pedro's credit, he was every bit as fast as, as Gutierrez. And we didn't think that. We thought Gutierrez would be the faster man. And Pedro was fucking right with him. Every exchange. So he's still got it. He's still quick as hell. He was the man with the power. He's always been known for his power. And like I said, it, it changed the whole fight just because of round one. So, And honestly, it's probably what, what ensured that he took round three as well because he had a few that really you could tell cracked Gutierrez and it was enough to probably take that round. So he gets a huge win for his career, similar to what I just said about Barbosa, where he kind of is able to stay relevant now, stay in the mix for big fights, maybe get another big one now. And... Gutierrez is close. Like, he's good. Once he adjusted, that was a really close competitive fight. Another guy who will learn from that one. The skills are there, and I'm sure we'll see him in in, in something interesting again. Yeah, man. Gutierrez is one of those guys that I think I expected a lot more from in that fight, but I don't even think that he is less skilled than Pedro Munoz. I think his approach to the fight, just especially like when he gets hit, when he got hit specifically in that fight, because Pedro Munoz throws a lot of heat behind those punches. And I think you're right. There was a tentativeness to it, but there was also almost too much respect uh, to a certain extent, right? Like Gutierrez never got that respect back from Pedro Munoz and Pedro Munoz was able to continue that pressure forward and, and land shots and Gutierrez tried to do things, but you could tell he was uh, almost too reactive to a certain extent and never really got to play his game and do the things that he's done um, that's made him successful in the past, even against Frankie Edgar and other people that he's fought. So it was, it was a rough night for Gutierrez. I, I, again, I don't think that skill for skill, he is a worse fighter than Pedro Munoz. I think they are very, both very talented in that regard. I think Gutierrez definitely deserves to be in the spot that he's in, if not a little bit higher. I just think his approach to the fight was not the best. Yep. That's a good point. All right. Where does Gutierrez go from here? Oh, no. Sorry. Pedro Munoz. Munoz first. So it's a tough spot to be in, but I think for me, Pedro has just earned being the guy to welcome Umar Nurmagomedov to the big fights. So that is where I am going to go. I don't hate that at all. I think that's a great fight. And yet my immediate reaction is Umar smokes him. And this is the disrespect yeah. of Pedro Munoz. <laughs> yeah. Man, I mean, Umar's a, the, the dude is good. The dude's just come off of a potentially 30-27 fight. Definitely 29-28 for sure, if nothing if nothing more. Yep. Uh, and immediately I'm picking against him in his next fight. Yep. <laughs> it's rough. All right. It is. Uh, what about uh, Chris Gutierrez? Right now, he is currently ranked 13th in the Bantamweight division. What are you thinking? 
I would love to say Jonathan Martinez, who's ranked one spot behind him, just to watch them try to kick each other's legs off. But they train together, so I'm sure that's not happening. So I will go with the one that um, I believe you threw out last week, which is that you thought the loser of this fight should be the next one for Adrian Yanez, and I will go with that, Gutierrez and Yanez. It's tough because one guy would have to lose two in a row, but I think it's the right fight right now. Yeah, but I don't have any allegiance to Chris Gutierrez, so he can <laughs> he can take that L. He can take that L for my man's Yanez all day. Let's go, let's go. I, he's got to work on that head movement though. If this shit happens again, I'm going to be playing. I, I'm going to play that sound clip. I'm yep. going to play the sound clip on here if he does this shit again. No, it's true. It's absolutely true. He does have to. All right. Uh, let us continue rolling down here with our boy Brandon Royval with the sneaky round one KO of Matthias Nicolau. I'll go first here. Brandon Royval is nasty. The opportunities this man finds, the the millisecond between the seconds that this man is able to capitalize is just is stupid. Um the, the this fight kind of went the way that we talked about it last week, where Matthias Nicolau was going to be the more measured approached, the the more technical fighter was moving laterally, keeping his distance, measuring, throwing shots when he knew he was able to land them, but not really expending any energy, any, any extra energy in that fight. Brandon Royval is is kind of like your brother when he first gets a video game, right? Just pushing forward and pressing A the entire time, and Royval was moving. Moving, throwing jabs, moving, throwing jabs, throwing crosses, moving. Um, and never really allowed <laughs> Matthias to settle in um, and get comfortable. And next thing you know, Brandon Royval throws a disgusting knee up the middle. Matthias goes full turkey on his legs. It just sprawls out. And it was the beginning of the end. A little ground and pound to seal the deal. But a, a real disgusting victory from Brandon Royval. A much needed one, I would imagine, too, especially in his position. Bro, what a massive statement from Brandon Royval. Like, I still can't believe he pulled that off. I, I truly did not think he had that in him against a guy like Nicolau. And I, I think it was the first relevant strike that he landed all fight long. Like, I, I can't even think of anything that landed prior to that. Nicolau was doing kind of, as you said, just what we thought fighting smart, staying safe. He was in and out, landing here and there. And it looked like, you know, he's playing the typical Nicolau game. And then he fucked up and Roy Val suckered him in right into that knee. It landed all types of flush. The elbows on the ground were just as flush. And Roy Val gets, I mean, I know he has big wins. Like he's beaten Kai Car France before guys like that, but arguably the biggest one of his career, just because of, of the way he did it. That was huge. The cleanness too, when you really think about it, there was no, no rolling around, no crazy nonsense, no back nope. and forth, no this and that. I mean, he timed that knee perfectly. I don't even think uh, Nicolau knew what he got hit with because that knee came from underneath and it hit him right in the jaw from underneath. So I don't even think he saw it. Um, and he went, man, the way his body just folded, just crazy, absolutely crazy. Um, yep. Good win, man. Really, really good win. Really necessary win, I think. Especially again, like, <clears throat> like I was saying, in his position with the uh, flyweights being so malleable now. You've got Brandon Moreno. You've got Davis and Figueiredo. Or no, you don't have Dave. Well, I guess you kind of do have Davis and Figueiredo now. Yeah, he's, he's fighting back. the cop. Remember? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, he's back in the flyweight division now. Uh, you've got Pantoja now that's fighting next. You got Kai Car friends <clears throat> kind of dangling out in the distance here. He's fighting um, Albazi. Oh, well, there you Remember. go. Yeah. So what are we doing with Royval then? Where is Royval going? Because everybody else then is below him. So well, that kind of, that's what kind of leads me to the issue. Um, I don't know what you do with this man right now, because as we said, Moreno's fighting Pantoja. Figgy's fighting Cop. <clears throat> He's already beaten Kai Car France, uh, who is booked against Amir Albazi, so... Do you wait and see what happens in that fight? And maybe even if the winner is Kai Car France, you do that rematch because it's been a few years. And if it's Albazi, obviously you can do that. Is he already in line for a title shot where he could just like wait and he's actually going to be the guy who gets the winner of Moreno and Pantoja? Like, I don't entirely know exactly where he's at right now, but 
it feels like, unfortunately, there's not a perfect answer for w- for what to do with him. Yeah. I don't know. What is the timeline for the Moreno-Pantoja fight? I feel like we just talked about this. It's not for a while, isn't it? That's like, that's part of the issue here. It is, oh, it's sooner than I thought. I take that back. It's in July. For some reason, I thought September. But yeah, July. So if it's in July, you figure nothing crazy happens. Three, four months at the most. So maybe like an end of the year fight. Brandon Royval would have to wait the whole end of the year. Yeah, but see, the thing is that cop Figueredo fight is on the same card. And if Manel Cop ever beats Figueredo, you know there's going to be a push for him to get that title fight. So, like, I kind of feel like Roy Val should be taking a fight here. I, I don't know that the waiting is worth it. But to take what fight? What fight is going to... Because if, in that regard, then what fight is going to be more than a Figueredo fight? Because you can't just take a random fight and then expect to kind of keep in the same momentum if, if Cop smokes Figueredo. If Cop smokes Figueredo, I think you're just out of luck. But at least if Figueredo wins that fight, I mean, I guess Roy Val waiting could still put him in position if if Figueredo wins that fight. Yeah, he's just got to maybe sit back and root for Davidson Figueredo. Maybe that's maybe that's where we're at. <laughs> Damn, that sucks, man. Yeah, he's in a really messed up position. It's it, it kind of yeah. sucks. Although, say Pantoja wins. Then Figueroa probably fights for the title again. It's probably Figgy and Pantoja. I mean, I, I don't know. His, his best option, honestly, is probably to stay, stay in shape, stay fit, stay making weight. Because yeah. if any one of these dudes drops out, he needs to be able to slip right in. It's yeah, that's there's good not point. a lot of movement here, and there's not a lot of room for for fucking around in the flyweight division right now. So he's he's got to stay ready. That's a good point. Yeah, cannot do the Patty Pimblet approach in between fights. Yes. Uh, all right, man. We have made it all the way into our lightning round. All right, man. We are going to go through the rest of this card quickly and easily. Let's start off right at the top here. Azamat Mirzakhanov, UD over Dustin Jacoby. Marco first. This guy's got freaking fight-changing power, man. I, I think that's what we... I mean, we kind of knew it, but I still feel like we under underestimated it when we were picking this fight last week. But everything that he landed was solid. It had Jacoby fighting way more defensively and tentatively than I ever imagined that he would. And, like, yes, as the fight went on, you could kind of see Jacoby's technique starting to take over a little bit. The cardio probably played a role, too, as we got to round three. But it was too late. Uh, you know, Azamat did a fantastic job. He came out hard, knocked Jacoby off his game, and, and he and he took the first 10 minutes, absolutely. Yeah, dude, the, the, the power was absolutely crazy. And I thought Jacoby would be able to take those shots a, a, even better than he did because let, let's be clear, Same. Jacoby is a goddamn tank. Uh, and yeah. he took a lot of those shots not a lot of people would have been able to take, especially a couple of the uppercuts that were kind of snuck in there thinking they were going to come from a different angle. So he walked right into him, still didn't go down. Um, he's an absolute tank. And uh, Merzikhanov definitely did enough work in the first two rounds to, to, to do enough to win that fight. But the third round, man, Jacoby poured it on uh, and really had Merzikhanov breathing hard. But good good fight, good fight overall, and uh, a good win for Merzikhanov. He's a weird guy. I still can't quite evaluate how good I think he is. I mean, he's undefeated. But, like, it's like, I don't know. For some reason, I'm like, is he that good? I mean, I think it's going to, especially if he can't put his hands on somebody, I think he's going to be fine lacking. You know what I mean? And guys are probably going to really be able to get off on him if he can't land any any of those punches. But if he does land, you could see it's, I mean, it pushes people all the way back. For sure. It's It's, it's it's big power. It's big power. Uh, Next on the list here, Eon Kunte Laba, round one TKO over Tanner Bozer. I'll go first. Uh, Kuse Laba needed this win 100%. Um, I think you saw the the intensity after the fight was over. And good on Kuse Laba, man. I mean, this was, I, I, you know, I, we didn't really talk about it last week. I think I took Kuse Laba just because. Um, and Tanner Bozer, physically, I think it was definitely the best Tanner Bozer I think we've ever seen. Definitely the yeah, smallest Tanner good. Bozer I've ever seen. Um, but it really didn't matter, man, because Tanner <clears throat> Bozer still lacks a little bit in that technique department. And Ian Kunte Laba is inconsistent, but technique for from a technique standpoint, 
I thought he always had the edge. So good on good on Quincy Lava for getting a nice win. Something else now to add to his highlight reel. Yeah, the speed was a big factor. You could tell Bozier was struggling with it, being used to fighting heavyweights and having to deal with the speed of Kutelaba. Kutelaba was landing first in nearly every exchange. He was closing the distance really quickly, and he got inside with a huge right that hurt Bozier and started everything. And if it's the first round and Kutelaba has you hurt and he still has his gas tank, you're in big trouble because he is an animal at, at that point, and he poured it on. And as you said, he needed this one bad, and he got it. So good on him. Rafa Garcia, UD over Clay Guida, Marco first. He put a lot of his fists in Clay Guida's face. Um, every time Clay tried to close the distance, Garcia would stuff or quickly clinch. And he had some pretty good phone booth style shots to, to kind of back Guida off him as well. And I don't, for one reason or another, it seemed like Clay just got kind of deterred from even trying to use the wrestling as the fight went on. But he was paying for it because he didn't really have another avenue, and uh, he got pieced up. So a nice win for Garcia. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that uh, Clay Guida didn't retire after that fight. <laughs> uh, he definitely fucked around and pissed some people off with his fake yeah, that retirement was bullshit. birthday speech. Yep. Um, but Clay Guida looked slow in there, man. He looked slow. He didn't look strong in there. Um I thought this was one of those performances where I, I think you could see that he's not really able to hang as well with a lot of these guys that are not even at the very tippity top of the division. Um, and he's been around for a long time, man. He's, he's definitely one of the OGs at this point. So, you know, I'm, I'm not thrilled about him not retiring because I thought it was about time. But um, Hoffa Garcia put on a great performance. I thought he won all three rounds. Yep. I thought his ability to switch up and adapt to moving forward – um, taking the bait from Clay because at one point Clay was trying to lure him in, and I don't think it really mattered all that much. So good for Garcia, man. It was a great performance. Uh, did you go? I knew you were going. I went. Yes, you went. All right, moving right along then. Bill Algio, round two submission over T.J. Brown. Go first. These boys were in a dog fight. In round one, um, Brown got dropped a couple times. Algio's nose is leaking. But as good as TJ was looking through a lot of these exchanges, you get in these like all gas dog fights with Bill Algio and you run the risk because he thrives in these. He thrives in the phone booth style fights and the chaos. And that's exactly where he caught TJ. It was a short check elbow as TJ moved in that hurt him bad. And then as much as he tried, he just couldn't escape the pressure and eventually had a tap. So another nice one for Bill Algio. Dude, when this happened, I didn't even see the elbow. I had no idea what happened. I had no idea why he dropped. I had It was it happened so quickly and so cleanly that I, I had no idea what, what had gone on. Yep. Um, Bill Algio is a beast, though, man. I mean, he's another one. He just he reminds me so much of Billy Q. It drives me crazy because they both have this like forward pressure, this crazy tenacity. Um they, they have decent chins. I mean, I know, you know, Billy Q just got knocked out. But overall, they have really good chins. Um, and it was a good submission, man. I mean, it was another opportunistic submission. They were going back and forth. They were exchanging a lot. They were rolling around a lot. And he just got to a point where he found something he was able to sink in. And he did it. Did it, did it well. It was a great finish. Uh, next on the list, Zach Cummings. Uh, round three, TKO over Ed. Herman, I'll go first. Uh, probably the best Zach Cummings I've seen, to be honest. Uh, moved well. The striking, I thought, was pretty crisp. Uh, definitely had power on his side. Granted, he was fighting Ed Herman, who Ed Herman hasn't really had the best performances of late. He's looked very slow, looked very much his age. Um, and just looks like somebody, I think, who's, you know, I, I would imagine still just fighting for a paycheck. At that point. Um, but I thought it was a good fight, man. I, I thought it was a, a gritty fight. Ed Herman took a lot of damage in that fight up until the end. Um, but I thought it was a good good accounting from, from Zach Cummings. Zach Cummings and Ed Herman both retired after that fight at the same time, putting down their gloves. Uh, Cummings wanted to kind of go out showing his daughter what he did. He goes out on a win. And Ed Herman has been around for a long goddamn time. Um, he is taking a lot of damage throughout his entire career. 
And I'm glad he's deciding to move on and doing things, uh, you know, different things now in his life without getting destroyed in the head. I hope I don't see him in power slap in the next 12 months. <laughs> it's going to make me sad. Yeah, bro. Thank God Ed Herman decided this was the end because he was taking some damn edge in there. I mean, Cummings' hands were twice as fast. He was landing so clean so often. Ed Herman's chin was too good for his own health. So, honestly, beautiful beautiful performance from Cummings, as you said. He gets the retirement in his hometown. Uh, I'm sure that was cool for him, but props to both dudes. Two solid UFC careers. Cummings was actually 10-4 and four in the UFC, which is wild. doesn't feel like that. Yeah. Um, and both battled, you know, to the end. Yeah. Jillian Robinson, round two submission of Piera Rodriguez. Marco first. Yeah, man, I was excited to see Jillian down at 115, and she looked good. She is a beast of a grappler, and we know this, but she never seems to get as much credit as she should get for it, and she showed it in spades here. She got taken down early in round one, reversed the position, controlled all the rest of that round, comes out in round two, goes right back to it, immediate takedown, back to work, doesn't rush anything, you know, tries all different setups, waits for the opening to come, takes Matt more than once, just dominating, and then... You know, Pierre gives it to her. She she lasted a while, but she finally made one mistake, and boom, armbar, fight over. So, interested to see more from Jillian at this weight. Yeah, one hundred percent. Jillian Robinson, if nothing else, man, is a worker. She's one of these girls that's not really going to stop moving. Um, when she has the ability to get the position on you, she's going to continue to move until she tries to get something that's going to work, get a submission, better position, ground and pound, like whatever the opportunity is. Um, She's she's good, man. I, it's it's interesting because you would expect her to be a lot more liked and respected because of her approach to the game. But sometimes I think there there has been I don't want to say stalling in her fights, but some of her fights have not always been I think as entertaining as it seemed that they have been recently. Um, so hopefully she gets a, a, the credit that she does. I think it deserves. She's she's definitely made her style a lot more entertaining and, and has been getting a lot more uh, finishes. I feel like as of late. And I don't know what Rodriguez was complaining about. I, I thought she tapped as well. So uh, yeah, I, thought, I did too. I thought she was trying to play that that heckin game there, where yeah, she's saying she tapped, didn't tap, kind of thing. And that's why I keep telling Mike, see, if that would have happened and you would have felt it, and would have let go as a result of thinking this person tapped, now you got somebody jumping on top of you and fucking you up and like i didn't tap i didn't say i tapped. Yeah, well, that was one single tap. I don't expect anybody to let go for one single tap. Um... But I, on the flip from Piera, like, you can't be slapping someone's knee while you're in a submission, whether you meant to or not. Like, yeah, it's the ref's job to see a tap, and you tapped. Yeah, and she was in a bad spot. I don't know how much longer yeah. she really expected to, to hang in there. But Agree. All right. Let's move right along here. Daniel Zellhuber, unanimous decision over Lando Venata. I will go first. Um, Lando's another one, man, who I feel like we expected a lot from. He's never really lived up to his potential. Generally a guy with a, a small gas tank, um, doesn't really get past round one without losing a lot of the technique and a lot of the flash and things like that. And man, I think he got worked in this fight, dude. Uh, Zell Huber was, was dangerous early, um, Definitely an argument to be made for a 10-8 round. I'm, I'm, I, I feel like because Lando still ended up getting up in the end and still seemed like he had his wherewithals, I think a couple of the judges didn't give him a 10-8 round, but that dude looked like he almost got finished like four times. So I, I feel like a 10-8 round is 100% warranted. Um, regardless, though, Daniel Zellhuber definitely did enough to win all those rounds, uh, at least two out of the three rounds. I feel like round three was a little... Um, two, two was the close. Was it one. two? Yeah. So, I still think Zell Huber did enough. Uh, it was a good fight, but Lando, I don't, know, I don't know how much more of this Lando I want to watch because it's just him taking a lot of damage. It looks good, visibly, visually looks nice, but it's just not effective enough, and he's getting fucked up. Yeah, I thought Zell Huber looked really good, man. That that was the guy that kind of got hyped up back when he debuted and fell super flat against Trey Ogden. So now you see why he had the hype, because he looked like a totally different fighter here. Uh, he out 
Lando Lando in terms of like the slick striking game coming from all different angles. And because he was kind of on the same level as him there, the fact that he was longer and had the reach really became a big factor. And he just kind of kept picking Lando apart and he beat him up bad in, in round one. So a yeah, nice one for him. Yeah. All right. Next on the list, Denise Gomes round two TKO of Bruno Brazil. I will go first. Uh, I think Gomes found an opportunity, man, because I feel like Brazil was 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 winning that fight. I thought she is she was better in the clinch. She had better control. She seemed like the stronger woman overall. Um, I thought she had a lot of nice combinations throughout that fight. Good amount of distance management, but in the end, it didn't mean shit because Gomes knocked her ass down and pounded her ass in a submission, um, and that was all she wrote, man. So Gomes with a nice from 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 my perspective, come from behind win uh, against Bruno Brazil. Yeah, this was another one where the range was a factor, but kind of in the opposite way. Uh, Brazil was longer, and it seemed like she kept thinking that she was, like, safely out of range. And she would be leaving her hands down, and then she would just get cracked. So, And then she would even keep her hands down after that. So it was a unique strategy. It just seemed like she was way too comfortable thinking, oh, I'm longer, you know, I'm safe out here. And she wasn't because Gomes is intense, man. She had her foot on the gas, and she kind of just tried to run her over. And eventually she did. That right was clean, and then some nasty ground and pound to finish it off. Yep. Gaston Bolanos, UD over Aaron Phillips. Go first, Mark. Yeah, the Bellator vet makes his UFC debut. He uh, gets a good win here. He did struggle at times with the grappling. He's certainly primarily a kickboxer, so not... Shocking that that was the case, but he is a dangerous kickboxer, and it showed, and he rode that to a debut victory. So pretty close fight, honestly. Um, you know, Phillips was in it, but I thought Bolanos uh, edged it. Yeah, I definitely thought Bolanos was the better fighter overall. You can kind of see the discrepancy between the two. Um, Aaron Phillips honestly kind of looked like he was trying to keep up in there. Um, definitely looked like the guy whose who, who gas was going a lot faster um, than Bolanos was, and and... Like I said, just tried to keep up in there. Didn't really seem like he was going for a win past a certain point. Um, so good performance from Bolanos, and we'll see what's next for him. Last on the list, the <laughs> Jocelyn Edwards split decision over Lucy Pudilova. Do you want to go first? This, this fight is fucking crazy. <laughs> I'm going to surprise you with what I'm going to say. You thought she won that fight? Not that I thought she won, but I thought round one was, like, kind of arguable. Like, I, I scored it for Pudilova, but it started with Edwards landing, like, a six-piece combo. Then we end up on the ground. Pudilova kind of does nothing the whole time they're on the ground, like a little bit here and there. I know it was a long time on the ground, but she didn't do that much. And then when they're back up, Ed, Edwards puts it on her again for like 20 more seconds. So like kind of as soon as it happened, I was like, mm, I wonder if we get any weird cards on that round. And obviously we did, but I, I just, I don't think. And so I, then obviously I thought um, that Pudilova won round two. And then again, three was close, but I kind of thought Edward, Edwards might've taken three. So yeah, I can't say I'm shocked. Like it wasn't, was it a perfect decision? No, but was it like the worst decision we've ever seen? I don't know that I thought that. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't care for it at all, to be honest. I thought Pudilova had done enough to win to win rounds one and two. I gave Edwards round three, um, but yeah, I don't. I don't know. Like I, I'm not even the type of guy that like advocates for ground control and all this shit. But at the same time, <laughs> it's got to count for something. And yeah, again, I scored whole... it for Pudilova, but. Yeah, you can't send, spend the whole goddamn round on your back, throw six punches in, and then be like, oh, I won the round. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Seems odd. Like, if she rocked her or something, dropped her, that's a different story, I guess. I'm actually curious now. I haven't looked at MMA decisions. Let's see. Let's see. I hope MMA decisions tells you your decision is bullshit. Round one. 16% of people gave it to Edwards. So I'm not alone in thinking that it was 
arguable. Um, but yeah, obviously the large that's, bulk. That's that's the stretch you're going with there. I mean, sixteen percent. It's not. It's not two percent. Um, and then yeah, ninety six percent poodle over round two, and sixty percent Edwards round three. So only only ten percent of people scored that fight for Edwards. But uh, but that's what I'm. Tra- that's kind of what I'm trying to say. Like, usually this kind of like uproar is a fight that like ninety eight percent of people scored for one person. Like there were ten percent of people that thought Edwards won this fight. I don't know. Whatever. I'm sure. I'm sure people are going to be hating on me for that take, but that's all right. Ten percent <laughs> of the people are wrong. It's all good. <laughs> sure happens. All right, we have done it, and that is the end of our lightning round. All right.